What's up, guys? It's Yugi Bros. Um, we just got confirmation on four of the five new skills for Attack from the Deep and uh, a bunch of the rarities. So I figure we will go through this real quick and we will learn what, uh, what we've got so far. So the first skill, called the World's Greatest Fisherman, uh, once per turn, you can pay 500 life points and discard one water monster, then add one water monster from your graveyard to your hand with a different name and with a level no more than twice the discarded level of the monster, and if you do, flip this card over. So this is cool, it's not once per duel, uh, you can do this once per turn, at the cost of 500 life, uh, it's excessively better than like Royal Flush's 1000. Uh, I think 5 is doable, that's not like any... Thing ridiculous. It might be late game, but of course, early game is kind of where this matters. Uh, you pitch a water monster and add a water monster from your grave with a different name and a level no more than twice. So, in my experience testing the water cards that we've been confirmed in speed duels so far, uh, I've been calling it Daedalus Turbo because the whole point is try to get uh, Levy Dragon Daedalus on the field as fast as possible, uh, pop the Yumi, and then pop your opponent's board. Um, there are very few water monsters whose level is no more than twice, like, Levia would have to, you would have to use a level 4 or higher water monster to discard to get Levia back to your hand with, and then activate something like big wave, small wave to summon it. Um, so it's a little awkward in that sense. You have the high tide Gyogen, I believe you pronounce it, and Great White. It's kind of like making you have to play those if that's your plan. That's an interesting uh, theory, though, because... Both of those aren't terrible. They're 16 and 1650, and right now the magic number is kind of like 15 or 17, depending on the Amazon field spell. But if you have Yumi on the field, both of these would be 18 and 1850, respectively. So that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, and it kind of makes you have to play the normal monsters if you want to add Levia back. But if not, uh, adding something from your grave back to your hand, like Lost Blue Breaker or Slushy, are definitely the ways uh, to make those both very powerful. Um, getting slushy back so that you can normal summon it again. That was uh, one of the main things I noticed with this deck was that uh, slushy was a real pain in the ass to get multiple times in a game. There was actually one game where I, I had the first and the second one down really quickly and I could never hit the third one. Uh, between Fishborg Planter and uh, the Imiruka, they both mill uh, cards from the top of your deck to your graveyard to do something. Uh, and I would try to always hit the slushy with either one of those, and <laughs> it, it just got to a point where the slushy was the last card in the deck, but this is interesting because you could add slushy back uh, if you pitched any of the water monsters, uh, the way I'm reading it, uh, to get slushy back to normal it again to dump the last one, so you kind of wouldn't be stuck in that I need the third slushy but I can't get to it situation. Uh, but this is also cool with like Lost Blue Breaker, um, no more than twice, so Breaker's a three, so you could pitch a two, and twice is four, so you could add Lost Blue Breaker. This makes it so you don't have to play multiple Lost Blue Breakers, uh, or Yomi Ships, actually, on that sense. Uh, Yomi Ship says if it's destroyed by battle and sets the grave, you can um, destroy that monster that destroyed this card. That doesn't target, so that's really good against something like Blue Eyes, for example. Uh, but Lost Blue Breaker says if you have another Fish, Sea Serpent, or Aqua monster on the field, you contribute this card to target a spell or trap on the field and destroy that target. That's really relevant. Uh, that would help out a lot in popping back row, but you wouldn't want to fill your deck with too many of those because you don't want to be bricking with that card. Uh, believe me, I tried it, and I ended up settling on just one because I was like, I, it, it's too, it's too bricky. So, uh, this is a very interesting skill. I didn't expect something like this, uh, in Speed Duels, um, but I am very impressed. Uh, I like this. I really like this. Alright, so next one is Mythic Depths. Uh, all fish, sea serpent, thunder, or aqua monsters on the field gain 200 attack and defense. All machine and pyro monsters on the field lose 200 attack and defense. This card's name becomes Yumi while on the field. So I was hoping, I was under the assumption we would get this. I was playtesting the Daedalus deck with this as the potential uh, skill. Uh, this is similar to how um, you have like Tomb of the Pharaoh. Uh, so this is going to be really consistently good just because starting the game with Yumi allows it Allows you to uh, go off as fast as possible with Daedalus. You don't have to draw the Yumi, the hard draw of the Yumi. I feel like you still want to play one Yumi in as a backup. Um, 
But this this makes it so that your two normal monsters start out at 18, 18, 50. That's pretty good. It also lets you start out with, if you could turn one Levia, which I've been able to do in the deck uh, through big wave, small wave most of the time. Um, if you could turn one Levia, you could pop your opponent's board by sending this to the graveyard. So this is going to be really solid. Uh, I was really hoping this... Um, would be in here, and according to this, it's a super rare, not an ultra rare, so that's good. It'd be really easy to get. Uh, oh, if I didn't mention, the world's greatest fisherman is ultra rare, but I think that's, I think that's justified. Uh, I, I, I really like that card. Uh, so moving on, number three. It's my lucky day. This is a Joey skill. Uh, the first two were Makos. Uh, when you activate an effect that would make you roll a six-sided die or dice, or flip a coin or coins, you could pay 1,000 life points to decide the result of one die or coin. This skill can only be used once per duel. A thousand's pretty steep, but it's once per duel, so I guess that kind of justifies it. Uh, but I, I, at the same time, a thousand's steep, but if you flip in a time wizard and the time wizard needs to go off, and that's the whole point, that's pretty solid, actually. Um, I think that's pretty good. I, I definitely think it makes Joey decks like <laughs> a little more consistent, because they were never consistent. Um, it's cool, because Graceful and Skull Dice, you could now <laughs> guarantee the six, which is interesting. Uh, and that buffs or decreases all monsters on the respective side of the field that it says. Um, this is going to be interesting, uh, for sure. Obviously, I was hoping we'd get something like this. Duel Links had something like this for Joey, so it'd be interesting to see what we could do with it. Um, yeah, uh, you know, Joey's all about the luck-based, so why not give him a skill that makes it a little more in your favor? Because going 50-50 on almost all your card effects that are relevant is kind of... Uh, terrible <laughs> if you're trying to play it competitively so yeah i'll give him this this is nice this is super rare uh and number four viral infection this is an ultra rare it's a kaiba skill uh once per turn discard any number of cards and declare one type of card monster spell or trap your opponent sends one card of the declared type from their deck to the grave for each discarded card if you do that flip this card over <laughs> Okay, this isn't once per turn. This isn't once per duel. Discard any number of cards. Uh, hmm. So hopefully you can keep replenishing your hand. I mean, you could also just play this as a little extra buff. This is interesting. Uh, with 20 card decks in the game, this is more relevant than something. This would be terrible in regular Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but right now, if you wanted to pick apart your opponent's deck. And let's say you knew that they were playing a certain amount of, like, X... I don't know, like... Eh, if I guess it's Amazon, and you've seen two of the three Swordswomen, because you're playing uh, Blue Eyes, because this is a Kaiba skill, and you need to... Uh, you really can't afford them to summon the third one off the village, so I guess you could send cards from your hand to the grave, so that they're guaranteed... Call Monster, they're guaranteed to dump the Swordswoman so that they don't have a way to get one off the village, so that you basically can keep going. I don't know. Um, but then if you play this, you can't play Dragon Caller for, for the Blue Eyes example. I don't, I, I don't know. This is... I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't think this deserves to be an ultra rare. I would rather have this been a super, because it could be broken, and I just don't... I'm not thinking about it. But it also sounds like it could be like luster. There's no cost to it. Life point wise, but discarding your hands are real critical in a game where you're not, you know, you're not filling your hand up all that much. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. Um, the only deck I could see you having a big hand with is Relinquish, the way it's going right now. And instead of playing Destiny Draw or something generic, you could play this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to mess with this, this one. Um... And the fifth skill is obviously not revealed yet. This is all uh, a box that uh, Ruffles TV opened, actually. So shoutouts to him. Uh, I'll put his uh, thing in the description below. Uh, he got the box super early. So he opened what he could open. And uh, we have the spoiler of what he opened, uh, essentially. That's why we don't have all of the rarities confirmed and the skills confirmed. We're missing the fifth skill. Uh, it's a Mako skill, because they said they do three Makos, one Joey, one Kaiba. Uh, but moving on to rarities. 
Uh, it says the ultra rares that are confirmed so far. Magician of Faith, that makes sense. Blade Knight also makes sense. Go for the Lightning, super sense. Uh, the World's Greatest Fisherman, I, I think this is a really cool card. And Viral Infection, I don't know how to feel about that. But um, according to Yugipedia, the other three ultra rares are Levia Dragon Daedalus, the Forceful Checkpoint, and Sonic Mother Flippin' Bird. Uh, okay. Uh, checkpoint could be really good. Levia is obviously really good. Sonic Bird is what's going to make Relinquish Tier 0. 0.5. Um, now we're going to have an off rarity of Senju being super and <laughs> Sonic being ultra. But hey, you know what? I've been pushing for Sonic Bird. Let's make it ultra. Screw it. Uh, this is going to be this is gonna be interesting. Uh, if that is uh, official, uh, Yugipedia currently has it that it is. So... Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, supers, we have, for confirmed, out of 6 out of 8, we have Zambina. I think that's a very good choice. Yomi Ship, I think right now that's a very good choice. Ryu Senshi, I think that's a terrible choice. Uh, Dust Tornado, makes sense. I was actually surprised I wasn't an Ultra, honestly. Uh, Mythic Depths, yeah, that's that's fair. It's the field spell. And then It's My Lucky Day. They, they make the skills all foil, so I don't think Lucky Day should have been foil, but like I don't think Straight to the Grave in the last set should have been foil either. And then the last two supers, according to Yugipedia, are Apprentice Magician and the last skill that we have yet to know. Uh, and then Commons, instead of going through this list uh, and having a tough time fitting it all on the screen, I made a Word doc, uh, and I wanted to highlight some specifics that I think are relevant. So we have Mythical mystical Elf, Magical Undertaker, which I think will be very good uh, in, in the coming Spellcaster options in the future. We have Arcane Barrier, Dweller in the Depths, Axe Raider, Fusion Recovery, Great Phantom Thief, Dijin Desirer of Rituals. I super disagree with this being common. This should have been a foil, at least a super, if not an ultra. But I, I take the super rare because it's not mainstream to the combo. Uh, Fulfillment of the Contract, Amazon Trainee, Robin Zombie, Goblin Zombie. As a common, guys, like... This will be really good in the future. It's 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 Goblin Zombie, guys. Like, come on. This could have been an Ultra, and I would have been completely justified. Uh, Sword of Dark Destruction, Pyramid of Wonders. This didn't need to be a foil, but I could have easily seen this be a super. Uh, this card's pretty good in Zombie decks. Uh, Great White, High Tide, The Legendary Fisherman. Uh, I'm really happy that they didn't make that a foil, uh, just because it's Mako's card, because that card's kind of whatever. Uh, Lost Blue Breaker. They could have made Blue Breaker something, but I don't think it deserves it. I don't think it's good enough right now. Fishburg Planter is another one where I don't think it needed the foil uh, treatment, but I think the card, at least in testing, has been pretty solid. It lets you just make sure you always have a monster in the field uh, if you're pitching a water from your deck. Uh, Amy Ruka. Slushy, I super disagree with this. This should have at least been a super. I don't think it deserves the ultra rarity. I think it definitely deserves the super treatment. I'm I'm really sad that it's a common, actually. I think this could have been amazing, but maybe, you know, uh, the tournament pack too. You know, Slushy, come on, maybe, guys. Uh, Power of Kaizijin, Umi. Big Wave, Small Wave is another one where... I, this is my one of my personal favorites from this set. I think this card is super underrated, uh, <laughs> being a common. I think this card will be ridiculous if you can make Levia consistent. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's It would have been... It makes more sense as a foil now. Later on, I could see it being obviously less played, but like uh, for the format that we're currently in, I think this deserves the foil treatment for sure. Uh, Water Hazard... That's a good one, uh, but I don't think it needs to be foil. Same with Moray of Greed, actually. That's a good one, too. I could have seen that be foil, but it's not. Uh, Warrior de Greffer, Sonic Duck, Sinister Serpent. I think Sinister Serpent's kind of like lost its luster after its errata, so I guess it makes sense that it's a common. Theban Nightmare, um, Infernity Beast, Warrior Elimination. I was kind of surprised by this, but I'm kind of not. It's going to be a side deck card. It's not going to be a main deck card, obviously. Uh, but Regeki Against All Warriors is pretty good. Um, Mask of the Accursed. And then Ready for Intercepting is the card that I've already showcased on this channel before. I think this will be a solid side deck card in a lot of decks. Flipping a Warrior Spellcaster face down allows it so that Relinquish loses its equip. Uh, Amazonus loses the Heirloom. Like, I think that's really good against a lot of things. I'm surprised that wasn't a foil. I didn't expect it to be Ultra, but I expected it to be Super for sure. Then again, I expect the Dust Runner to be Ultra for sure, so I guess here we are in this situation, but uh, I don't know. I, th I disagree with that completely. Uh, the most important ones I disagree with are Ready for Intercepting, Dijin, 
uh, Goblin Zombie, just because of what Goblin Zombie is, and Slushy, for sure. Like, I think those four deserved the Foil Rarity way more than the rest of them. But yeah, so, uh, shoutouts to Ruffles TV. Uh, this guy had the first opening. I looked for other openings. I hadn't seen any yet. I don't know if it's changed as of since uploading this, but, um, and then Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization for showcasing what he pulled. Uh, so both of them, uh, get all the credit in the world for this video. Um, but yeah, guys, I think it's solid. I mean, the upside to having all these commons that I think deserve to be higher rarities is that they're not going to be expensive, so we can pick them up really cheap and we can play uh, more competitively with less money. So that's always good. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting set. Uh, I like I like, I like where it's going. Uh, I think this game will be interesting. I do think Relinquish is tier 0, or at least tier 0 0.5, and everything else is not even close. If anything can do it, uh, Levy a Dragon, if we can get that to turbo out and pop the Relinquish board, uh, maybe, maybe something like that. Uh, I also think the mirror match is going to be insane. It's going to be Sonic Birds and Senju's all day, so. Anyways, be sure to like, subscribe, as always, comment in the description down below. Please tell me what you guys think about uh, these rarities. But as always, I am Yugi Bros. I can't wait for this set. I hope you can't either, and I can't wait to learn about our new Speed Duel meta. Alright guys, peace.